uh, thank you, Nicol and uh, Nicola, for setting us up nicely as well with their talk. Um, talk's going to overlap quite a bit, and I probably just changed it in my head as a result of listening to uh, Nicol and uh, Nicola and what they've just said. And we're going to show you about something very similar. Um, but some of the stuff that they were talking about, we've been doing for a while, especially around the VCEs and the sort of automatic generation of things like uh, study artifacts, like uh, annotated CRF and Define. Yeah, um, that's that's sort of uh, what the business we're in. We're going to talk about this Transcelerate hack. Um, so let me just get the the right control. Um, this was the abstract. Um, you know, it was just talking about the Transcelerate hack on, but I just picked out a few words: automating, traceability, linking. This is what this is what Nickel and uh, Nicola were just talking about: automating, linking stuff together. But you know, I always come back to that, those two words down the bottom, remove silos, removing silos. We are trying to get away from the, the big brick walls that we have um, sitting in our studies where we find it very difficult to you know, pass information from one bit of the organisation to the other. Um, and, and this is what Transcelerate were wanting to know, this digital data flow. Um, for those who aren't familiar with it, um, started emerging we we first heard about it sort of late last year but uh, transcelerate put this initiative together looking at digitizing as it says their clinical study design longer term it's all about edc setup automating that process but they started looking sort of at the front end of the business the protocol and some of the things that nicola was showing you the objectives uh, study endpoints these sorts of ideas uh, coming through, linking it with data collection instruments, assessments, these biomedical concepts, so that type of thing. Um, and they wanted to do this hackathon, um, but a bit different. It was a virtual hackathon and it was nothing to do with the, you know, work that's uh, sort of practices that we've had over the last few months with being virtual. You know, normally a hackathon, you get together in some delightful basement in some hotel in Chicago or somewhere like that, sit together for three or four days trying to connect your system uh, with somebody else, that type of thing. This was very much working on your own as an individual company, um, just trying to sort of uh, prototype the ideas that uh, Transcelerate were trying to uh, look into. As I say, we first started hearing about it, you know, late last year. In November, there was a document came out, November 2019, and it, it was a bit of a, uh, it was an okay read, a bit dry, as most technical documents are. Uh, and then I hit this one paragraph, and it was the sort of thing, it just sparked the thought, it just put the idea into my head. Um, I started seeing relationships which I hadn't really thought about before. And you saw the pictures that Miko was and, and Nicola were showing in the last presentation. You know, graphs, lots of lots of spider web connections, relationships, and there's some relationships in here. Um, you can see third, fourth line, predicted FEV1, baseline to week X. You know, these are the endpoints and objectives of the study, these type of thing, time points. And you can start to see relationships emerging in that that paragraph there and this is the paragraph that uh, sparked my uh, my thinking and so it's quite an interesting once i read this so i started reading the rest of the document properly after that and sort of paying attention rather than just sort of skimming across it fast forward to march and of course the world changed um transcelerate had very nicely scheduled the hackathon to run from march the 9th to april the 7th and of course, as we all know, something happened in the world around a similar sort of time. We, uh, as a business, had decided to write 16th of March, we'll sit down for the week and we'll look at this closely and we'll work on it and we'll try to put something together. Unfortunately, 12th of March, the week before we were planning to do all of this, um, we, uh, I, I participated in a partners meeting in the business and we really decided that things were getting bad enough that we ought to get people to work from home for their for their safety uh, and all that sort of thing and I think that was a Thursday about two hours later the Danish government said right you, you know you're shutting down from tomorrow morning and on Friday uh, Denmark shut down you know borders were closed this sort of thing don't use public transport if you can avoid it you know guidance came out um, so Friday morning was spent getting keyboards to people, monitors being taken home, this sort of thing, so that people could work effectively from, from home. 
And we started using Microsoft Teams and that, you know, that was a bit of a shock for the team that were used to being in the office most of the time, working from home occasionally, you know, suddenly communication was closed off and this sort of thing. And uh, it, it was just coincided with the work we wanted to do. And it was a bit of a shame because the whiteboards had been cleaned and we were all ready to go and enjoy ourselves for a week. You know, the only thing we hadn't done was order the pizza. Um, so, it, you know, March changed everything. At the beginning of that week, though, we decided to go ahead with it in a sort of virtual way and we spent a week and then uh, Transcelerate extended the uh, timeline by about a week or two just to give people more time due to COVID-19. Uh, and we did a little bit more on it towards the end of that period and, and sort of sent in our ideas. But at the start, we had an MDR, um, which we validated and produced you know, sort of early last year, sort of March time. We had a study workbench, which had a lot of the things that uh, Nicola was showing, you know, we had a study workbench, which does the sort of domains, the, the uh, real time, the value level metadata, annotated CRF, define XML outputs, but didn't go back into the protocol. It started very much at the scheduled assessments. During the summer, we spent a lot of time re-engineering the terminology handling. Uh, in the MDR such that we stored everything as a set of differences rather than a new release every single time CBIS released it every quarter. And the other big change was, as you hopefully just about see from those screenshots, we changed the user interface. We upgraded it a lot to make every job more efficient, you know, less clicks for doing the same thing, make it prettier, make it smoother, make it easier to use. So we had our second sort of generation MDR. We released that as a community version, which you can use for free with just the CDIS terminology in um, about October, I think last year. And we've just put the, um, the COVID-19 CDIS release into that version. So that's all up to date. So we had those two things, MDR, second generation study workbench, and we had the digital data flow documents and ideas and that sort of thing. And we tried to merge all those into a single application. That's what we want to do with our study workbench. We want to basically bring it into one application. So you have MDR, study, build, all in one place, just controlled by roles um, and access via roles. So there we were. Um, nice little picture of the team We're working from home once uh, COVID-19. There's Johannes in the top corner there with his uh, Tintin poster. Um, we wanted to focus on the key pieces. Um, uh, the more technically demanding, not the easy task. It's pretty easy to pick from a list. It takes user interface work. Nicola showed a load of stuff in it. It, it took him a while to put back together. It's time consuming, um, but it's not the most technically demanding. It's, it's, it takes a lot of time to make it look nice. What we want to focus on was some of the sort of more tricky tasks to actually, you know, show ideas, transcelerate, but also learn for ourselves. We're also very keen on time boxing our activity. We wanted to make sure we're efficient. We didn't want to spend too much on this. We, this obviously isn't customer work. We have to pay our way. Um, and as I say, take our second generation MDR, add the things that we want to do it. Um, so develop a prototype, auto generate the scheduled assessments from study objectives, endpoints, and study timeline. Link those study endpoints to BCs and then show that we can link it to the study workbench. And if I have a show of assessments, I can produce a define, a BDC load, be it ALS, be it ODM, be it whatever's needed. Um, so that's what we were focusing on, that timeline, that show of assessments linked back to the study objectives and endpoints uh, and, and protocol activities. Um, so this is what we did. Um, the, the sort of screenshot to the left is the new timeline interface that we put together for the hackathon through about a week and a half uh, or so of work. Um, the one to the right is the old study workbench with, which started at the SOA, very similar to what Nicola was showing you, should have assessments, but detail, CRF, annotated CRF, automatically generated domains, value level metadata, automatically generated with an export for um, uh, define XML, that sort of thing. So, and this is this is what I want to emphasize, and I think this is where you know Mika and uh, Nicola as well, and the 360 were all trying to get to this point. And I just picked out those two orange boxes and sort of wrote it out, wrote it out in big big letters, really, just to emphasize it. This is what we want. If you look, protocol, 
design, uh, study design interventions, you know, what, what's, what design is the study using, what interventions, what, you know, um, what therapeutic area, as, as Nicola was showing, what objectives, what are the endpoints, what's the timeline, give me my SOA, give me the study detail, give me the CRF, give me the ACRF, they're just different views of the same thing really. Tell me about the domains, you know, the documents that I need to attach to my defined, you know, study reviewers guide, all that sort of stuff. Uh, terminology is being used, both sponsor, see this versions, all that sort of thing. All of that, all, we can do so much work and automating all of this. Once we get the sort of information down to that timeline point in that sort of left to right process. But that's what we're trying to get to. And that's what we try to do with sort of our prototype is just sort of try to show to ourselves, prove to ourselves that we can do this. And uh, I think we, we are quite happy that to, we managed to do that. And I've just noticed approaches in the spell, I think. The model. Nicola, Mikael was showing you Neo4j screenshots. Uh, we have a model. We have a production model. And what we did, uh, graph databases are lovely. Um, and that they allow for update and refinement without disruption is really important. Uh, really important. But the design we've used is to remove silos from the beginning based on BCs, very important to the whole process, and to avoid mapping. We do not map anything. If we're mapping, we've got it wrong. Mapping is basically the absence of a relationship. We either forgot it, we didn't put it in, it's not there. Um, as soon as you're thinking, I'm going to map something, you're, to my mind, you're getting it wrong. We should just be following a relationship. Um, so the model is very important and it brings, and I think, you know, the guys talking before will tell, will tell you that's where the power comes from. It's in the model. This is where Transcelerate wanted us to focus. You know, in the, um, the model area here, um, in the protocol study design, so that's where we wanted to go. That's where we spent our work. And we, we developed a sort of full model as part of the hackathon to fill in the pieces we didn't have. And Johannes will sort of give you one example of the power it brings uh, later. Um, and we took the opportunity just to improve a few things on the way BCs and forms and linking time points to, to BCs. Right, I'm gonna now show you, uh, I'm not gonna be brave like, um, Nicola was because I'm just going to run a video and hopefully this runs okay. Um, but this is the application we put together for the hackathon over the week and a half or so that we spent, the, the team spent working on it. Um, study timeline, scheduled assessments, and then uh, Johannes will take over. So here's version management, as Nicola was showing you. Here's your, here's your study protocol, the good old LZZT from CDISC. Objectives and endpoints, as we were seeing before, all the things. And we pre-populated this. We didn't worry about trying to build them. But what we did want to build was this timeline. And look at the user usability and how we could do it. Could we get ARMS and epochs? And how could we manipulate them? So we can build any ARMS, any epochs. We can put any time point on the timeline. We can attach any assessment, any BC to a given time point you know and it shows the number of assessment where it is and the timing you know this is an epoch you know we all know this sort of stuff visits as well and this is where Johannes will pick up on the visits in a minute so we can slide things along this is what we wanted to do we wanted usability we wanted ease of creating these things uh, we can load templates of arms and epochs and that sort of thing so we can set studies up quickly we can duplicate old studies. But every time point has a series of assessments linked to it, and we can change, you know, we'll put it into days, we can put it into weeks, we can put it into months, depending on what your study sort of, what makes sense for your study. We can slide them between epochs, this sort of thing, um, and, and save it all to the database, all graph base, of course. Um, and we can then create new time points we can basically say, right, oh, new time point, I'll put it there. And then we get a new time point, obviously no assessments attached to it, change the timeline, with the reference into weeks, um, that sort of thing. And there's a second mechanism, we can do the same, um, just by sort of saying, we can go and then click on it, move it around, but we can also 
add it to, you know, I want to put it here and I want to put it on these arms or individual arms and in these epochs or what have you. And that will create a time point. And then what we can also do is associate time points with visits. So it's just drag and drop. Okay, that's now in week 24. Um, and then we'll create a new time point and I think put them both into uh, week 16. So just put that week and then we'll put those both into week 16 in the visit. And we just slide that and then associate the second time point. So we now have that in week 16. Uh, especially useful if you've got very small difference, time differences between those time points. And now you see all the assessments attached, all the assessments, and then I just go to my SOA and it's automatically generated. Um, I, don't, I don't have to do ticks and crosses now. I just play with my timeline, get my timeline right. Um, and we've chosen one view. This is basically adding assessments to a time point, BCs, assessment forms. Uh, we view BCs as a single observation, assessments, a collection of BCs, you know, like a QS instrument, what have you. So we've added two BCs, we go back, there they are now in the time point, and now they appear in the SOA. Um, and of course, you can have as many views as you want, you know, as, as the guys were saying earlier. You know, it's querying the database. You know, this is the raw input. We can draw this in various ways, and I think we just go on and delete it. But it's all linked. This is the key thing. The protocol to the design, to the objectives, to the endpoints, to the timeline. We auto-generate the SOA, and there we go. We are now done. And I'll let Johannes take over. But I just want to stress, all linked. Johannes? Thank you, Dave. So I am going to try and explain why this uh, hackathon experience was so important for us and why we have been longing for this for some time. Uh, actually, in uh, at the CDIS interchange in Berlin 2018, Dave had a talk uh, about Into the Fire uh, by using CDISC and the Health uh, HL7 fire standard and integrating them. Uh, and he demonstrated how to generate an STTM domain from uh, this EHR data that is uh, available on the fire test server. Uh, just by using an API, uh, integrating it into our model, and then use a query to create uh, an STTM domain. And it worked. The STTM domains were gen generated, and we did a couple of them uh, just by the push of the button. Uh, but there are, uh, you can see in this picture, of course, there are some pieces missing, but that's because they are not collected. But the, the model itself was in place to, uh, to support it, but not visit and time point, uh, yeah. along with other things that are defined in the protocol. And what you want to get to is, of course, a complete STTM domain to support I mean, the bigger picture from protocol into the STTM domain. Uh, so this is again, it's again the same thing as uh, Nicola and, and Mikkel was talking about, but and Hackathon just provided a very good opportunity for us to do that. So next slide. So this is the state before the Hackathon. Everything on to the right of the great Chinese wall where it was existing, and that was what supported the Esther team domain generation in, in the previous slide. Uh, but we have this big silo where we are separating the protocol from the study ex execution and the, uh, and the biomedical concepts but they are really needed to actually create a full domain so next slide the model supports the consumption of the data capture so that we can just by a query automate the unique subject id the result and the date next slide and then the biomedical concepts provide a definition, so forms can use them, and we can use them for querying and auto populating the test CD, the result unit, and location. Next slide. But we can't reach the visit because the Great Wall of China is now blocking our way. And this is where 
if you could see this previous slide that over in the protocol and study design area, that's where the hackathon wanted us to go. So the next slide. So thanks to the hackathon, we did a lot of work trying to build up the last pieces of integrating the study design. So now we have removed the silo of the Great Wall of China uh, and we can complete our STTM query and automate the domain generation with the push of a button as we now have it all accessible. Uh, and I think my time is running out, so I'm leaving over to you, Dave, to finalize. Yeah. Um, you know, so I'll leave it on this slide for a minute because I think we're, we're, we're just about okay and John will forgive us because um, he's a good lad. Um, you know, this is, this is what it's all about. It, it's removing silos. It's, it's giving us everything together. It's giving us our model, our metadata, bringing it together with our data, allowing us to do a lot more by query rather than programming. You know, if I just step back to this slide, you know, that wall of, you know, is that nice picture that Johannes had put in the Great Wall of China. We solved that by having a person read a document. You know, they, they, they take the document from the left-hand side and in the right-hand side, they work out the visit, they program it, they do something. What we want is to get to this, where we're doing it, the machine can do it for us because it has the relationships, it knows which VC goes with which visit and all the rest of it, because we've set it up in the study design and we can do it automatically. So, you know, in a, we in, in, a, in a week and a half or so, we in a short period allow ourselves to participate in that. The, the hackathon. You never get as far as you like. Um, but we demonstrated the core purpose. We can link protocol study design, we build a model, we show that we can, having got the SOA, we already know that from an SOA we can do ACRS define and exports. We, you know, we've got plenty of examples of that. We now glued the SOA to a timeline and protocol. Very beneficial to us um, and strongly flavor our next phase of development. The link model removes the silos. It just allows us access to the design information when it is needed. As Nicola and uh, um, Nicola were saying, you know, it's, it's what we find all the time. Getting the model right, removing those silos, removing those brick walls to allow us to get on with the job. Um, I'll finish there, John. Thanks very much. And apologies for snackling a little bit of extra time. Absolutely not a problem. Um, really interesting presentation. Um, take as much time as you like. You are actually the last, uh, our last <laughs> presentation today. So, I, I mean, was there anything else that you perhaps wanted to add that you didn't think you had the time? No, uh, no, no. I, I think I, 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 I sneaked a bit extra in on the oh, Johannes. So Apologise for Johannes, but uh, you know, we just wanted to pick one use case, and this visit, this this whole notion. You know, every time. You know, it's visit is always a bit of a struggle sometimes. You know, where does this belong? It's yep. just showed a nice the protocol to visit is just a nice sort of one end to the other type uh, type example. But there are there are many examples like this where we need the information to do this job. And of course, we can query the database in other ways for other types of outputs. Hmm. Okay. Um I'm going to ask, we, we haven't actually had any questions through, but I have a question. I mean, it's it's going to be along the same lines as the question for Nicola, Nicola which is, um, how can I access this? How can I get to look at this this data? I mean, you, um, you, well, you, go on, oh, John, sorry. sorry. No, I, I was just trying to say, you know, you work this through with your, your hackathon, but um, I'm seeing this now. And, and as I said before, I'm classically a statistician. So, you know, I, I'm used to seeing columns columns, rows and yeah. columns of data. And um, I, I'm really interested in, in this, this new approach, this, this more intuitive, I feel, approach to data. Um, but I'd like to, you know, how can I perhaps get involved in this process? Well, you know, there's, you know, from, for one thing, we, we, we produce a free version, which, you know, we, as I said earlier, just does see this terminology and if you contact us, we can give you a link and you can just sign up and use that. That gives you CEDAS terminology. We're thinking in maybe a, a month or two, maybe over promising here, so let's say three months, 
we will add into that free version sort of BC so that you'll be able to sort of view them and just download a few, um, just to start getting the community um, familiar with them. Because we've talked about them for a long time. I've been using them for a long time, um, but we, we've got the ability now to sort of productionize it. Um, obviously, we, we, we've done this work. We were a commercial, obviously, we're a vendor. So we, 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 we've been doing it for our own benefit. We've contributed a little bit to the uh, 360. Obviously, we've contributed to the Hackathon and the Transcelerate work. Um, obviously, if you want to get involved yourself with graphs, you know, there's people in Fuse who are really good. There's obviously Johannes sitting here. There's Tim Williams. Um, the CSS is probably the best place from my experience, that sort of thing, to sort of meet people who are thinking in similar ways, you know, but, um, you know, there are work, the, the working groups and this sort of thing um, within Fuse, uh, you know, the places if people want to find out about this graph stuff, you know, it's been mentioned three times, I think, at least three talks have mentioned it today, you know, Peter's, um, Nickel and uh, um, Nicola, sorry, I'm terrible with names and obviously Arsenal's. Um, you know, we've all mentioned graph technology. It is becoming more mainstream. Tim's been talking about it for a long time. We've been using it. You know, I, I started this sort of work back in 2015. Um, so a few CSS would be the, uh, the best place. Obviously virtual this year, as you said earlier, which is a bit of a shame because it's always yep. a good. Always this a good is Mikkel here. Can I make a comment? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, as you know, the, the CDSC interchange will close and wrap up the uh, CDS 360 project. But we are actually planning to do a, a workshop at the Fuse Connect, uh, which I don't know, it will be physical or virtual, but in um, November in uh, uh, Liverpool or online. And uh, actually part of that workshop will be focusing on the biomedical concept and you can say explore the uh, how we have applied graph technologies and have discussions on that in in the fuse uh, uh, connect. So uh, the, look up for a, a CDS 360 workshop coming at the uh, fuse connect. I don't know whether you want to add anything, uh, Johannes, about getting involved in graph, given that you've done the workshops for fuse and this sort of thing on graph technology. Uh, yeah, I mean there are actually plenty of online web courses that are free. So, I mean, uh, we were not planning to do the work, the linked data workshop on this year's views because we've held it now and we're hoping that there will be some other people that will step up and actually uh, take over because uh, we wanted to move forward and we cannot, we cannot be the only ones doing this. <laughs> so I'm hoping that, but uh, there's plenty of resources out there actually, uh, and there's actually some, yeah. Just search for linked data uh, education and you will find so many.